Hi gang, Scott here. Well, today's the day. Luminar AI is upon us. You can get your hands on it. You can start working with this software. And I wanted to give you five things to pay attention to as you're looking at Luminar AI. Why? Because Luminar AI is a different animal. It is not Luminar 4. It is not a new version of Luminar 4. There are several things that are different with it. And I think it's important to be aware of those. I will run down these five things here and I have a separate video for each one of them that will go into more detail about it. So let's get going. Number one, if you are a Luminar 4 user, keep Luminar 4 on your system when you install Luminar AI. Why? Any looks that you have created in Luminar 4 will be found and migrated into Luminar AI. But it only happens once. It happens at install time of Luminar AI. So if you don't have Luminar 4 on your system, or you add looks to Luminar 4 later on, they're not gonna migrate over. It's a one-time deal, and then they are found in a, in a particular area in the template space. And I've got a separate video that'll show you where to find them once you've got Luminar AI up and running. But keep Luminar 4 installed on your system when you install Luminar AI. Number two is templates. Templates in Luminar AI, uh, they're a little misunderstood. They're not, you know, they're, they're kind of like presets, but not really because of the AI technology that's being used where they're content aware and they can notice things in your photos and make adjustments accordingly. Could be for landscapes, could be for portraits. Templates do a little more than just adjust sliders because of the AI tools that they're using. And also, templates are not like the one-click wonder. They're to jumpstart your work, get you 80, 90% of the way there, and then you take over. You're the artist, you fine-tune things. So. Templates are wonderful to get you moving and get you going, but they don't replace you as the artist. Number three, and this is a big one, there are no layers in Luminar AI. Layers are gone. You don't have access to layers anymore. No adjustment layers, no image layers. Now there are facilities to do localized adjustments. If you need to warm or cool or sharpen or you know, dodge or burn, particular subjects. There are some tools to help with that. There's a dodge and burn tool. There are local masking tools, so you still can mask particular adjustments, warmth, exposure, structure. Uh, you do not have that in a layered capacity. There are also facilities for texture blending. So you can still do texture blending, but you're not doing it with a layer. You're doing it more like the texture overlay tool from Luminar 4. I've got a couple more videos that explain local masking in Luminar AI, so you can check those out. Links are below. But your hardcore layering, if you have a need to go beyond what I've just described and need a layered workflow, you'll need to look at another tool to incorporate Luminar AI into your workflow, such as Photoshop. Number four, if you're coming from Luminar 4 to Luminar AI, a lot of tools have moved around. Uh, some tools have just been simply renamed. Other tools have changed groups or their functionality has been folded into a larger editing tool. And some tools are just gone. They just disappeared. I've got another video that will go through each of the tool groups from Luminar 4 and show you where to find that tool in Luminar AI. Or if the tool is just gone, it's just gone. But check that video out if you're coming from Luminar 4. It'll walk you through like a translation of all the different tools from Luminar 4 to Luminar AI. Number five, and this is another big one. Luminar AI is not your asset manager. It's a photo editor. It does photo editing very well. Not, it's just not set up to be an asset management tool for a large set of photos. And that's certainly my opinion. I'm being very candid about that. But I also think Skylum has been pretty clear about their direction, their roadmap. They've steered away from asset management, from metadata to editing. That's where their focus is, and that's what they do very, very well. Get your photos in, get them edited, and move on to your next photo. The catalog is really almost just a convenience to get your photo into an editing workflow if Luminar AI is the only tool that you're using. If you have larger scale asset management needs, you need to look at incorporating Luminar AI into some other ecosystem. I've got another video to talk a little more about what has changed in asset management in Luminar AI. It's actually gotten a little bit smaller, 
So really, it is not your asset manager. Check out the other video, some more thoughts about that. So those are the five things about Lunar AI I think you need to know. Quite a bit of change, you know, a lot of tools shuffled around, no more layers, but more AI power. It is a fun editor to use. I've been enjoying it uh, over the past uh, six to eight weeks now and looking forward to keeping it part of my photo ecosystem. I do expect I'll be using it as an adjunct tool to my other editing tools and uh, leveraging that AI power. And if you've got other questions, go ahead and drop them below. Check out the other videos that will go into each one of these five things I shared with some more detail. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.